Brilliant cinemas this Wednesday. Please give a huge round of applause to the star of the film, Mr. Daniel Radcliffe. Uh, hello, thank you very much. Cheers. Hi, uh, that was almost um, a stunt entry onto the stage. That was amazing. Well, that was, I don't know. You I can't leapt. see it. I, it, was, it was sort of invitingly low down to jump Good. onto. Yeah. Liked it. Thank you. And I love this film. Um, Good. I've, Good. I'm in a privileged position where I've seen it and a lot of these people here haven't. But um, congratulations. Can I first say that comedy feels incredibly natural Thank to you, you very much. Was it a natural feeling and experience? Uh, yeah, definitely. It was lovely to, this was kind of a, a pleasure to make this film you know it was um it was you know i'd never done comedy really on screen before i'd sort of done a bit in extras and i'd done a bit on stage um but no to be able to do a whole film where your your job every day was just to turn up and and make the person in the scene with you laugh rather than to you know have some sort of emotional breakdown or you know save a dying child from a train or whatever it is that i've done in sort of other films it was nice to just be able to i don't know turn up and be sort of myself every day. I mean, it is the most like myself of any mm. character I've ever played. I think. I, I wanted to ask you that, and whether that was a whether that was a, an easy experience, or or whether that was actually quite difficult, because you know there was there was less. I, I get less barrier, I guess, there. Or, yeah. or I mean, I think if I was doing it in the context of a film that was a lot darker, then it would be kind of harder to um, use more of myself in that kind of, you know, in a more painful context. But because this film is, is so light and sweet and, and, and very you know, sort of charming, um, it, it wasn't like I, I wasn't kind of having a very intense day and then struggling to separate myself from the character when I got home or anything. It was just, you know, it's uh, in this occasion, it was very nice to be able to let some of myself through. And I think in the past when I started out acting I kind of would have thought that it was um, I don't know that it didn't really count as acting if I'm just playing myself or mm. that somehow that was a lesser version of doing it but actually as you say you know it, to just be yourself in front of the camera is is quite something sometimes and I'm glad yeah I'm definitely glad I got over that in time to make this film because I think I'm not particularly like the character in this movie so I think when you put sort of my personality into a character that I'm not particularly like it sort of it makes something interesting happen do you like it better or is it a different experience to um it's just a different experience that's the thing that there are lots of ways that acting can be fun for me like it's really fun playing the kind of part i play in horns which is totally different from uh, anything i've ever done that is crazy and dark and weird and every scene is really emotionally intense um but it's also very fun to be able to balance that with a film like this which is not particularly emotionally intense and you just get to come to work and like eat sandwiches every day which i also or, there's a that probably won't make it mean very much to you guys yet who haven't seen the film but there's a sandwich in the movie called fool's gold which is um a f sandwich that elvis made famous and is has got uh, it's disgusting it's brilliant it's absolutely uh, it's uh, did you have one yeah, I had several slices. I didn't have one Crikey. all to myself. But I had, like, there's basically, it's a loaf of Italian, no, Italian white bread. That's just the line I say in the film. It's a loaf of white bread. <laughs> um, it's a loaf of white bread cut in half, and you hollow out the inside, and you pour an entire jar of peanut butter into one half. And an then, entire and then jar? A, and then an entire jar of jam into the other half, and then you stuff it with a pound of crispy bacon. And then you, and then you, and then you coat it in butter, and you bake it. And it is extraordinary, and it serves like eight to twelve people, and uh, you should all go home and eat it. Although Elvis ate one in its entirety Elvis used to and eat one to then himself. died, yeah. Yeah. and then you know <laughs> died in a way that you can read up on your own time. Um, uh, we've got some clips actually. We, we, if okay, that's yeah. alright to, to show, lot. and um, and this is uh, the first clip we're going to show is. Um, I love these things. I have them at home. The fridge um, ward oh, things uh, where you fridge, yeah, fridge, yeah, and uh, this is kind of the first time that you guys have met not the, in, the initial first time but at the first party that you guys that, that Chandra and, uh, and Wallace meet so let's have a look at this clip first let's see <laughs> everyone's um, got a friend like Adam haven't they oh every, Alan, yeah you need, you need a friend Alan, like uh, like Alan Adam Driver's character um yeah that was I'm, I'm trying to remember if if swearing has been cut out of that or thank you I love you too we should probably <laughs> see other people um, <laughs> Um, um, but yes. Um, now so, you put him off. Come sorry, on. no, I wasn't. I wasn't saying anything particularly interesting. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. Sorry. So fridge magnets. Y no, yeah. Well, yeah. We were talking about fridge. Uh, but we we're talking about 
the character of Alan because I think yes. everyone has a, a friend like yeah. Him. I mean, I I kind of envisaged Wallace and Alan are the kind of friends that they were roommates at college, and that's the only way they ever could have been friends. Like if they'd met at a later date, they would have hated each other, and they're the, they're, they're the type of friends you have to have known for less all your life, and kind of the type of friend that there was some time you spent with them was sort of mandatory, like you couldn't get out of it, but eventually you ended up liking each other more than you thought you would. Um, I think that's kind of my, my and Adam Driver's character's relationship. But yeah, you need, he needs somebody like Alan to just like pull him out of himself more. And then there's a different friendship which develops the film. And I love, I watched an interview that you've done um, and you kind of described the film as almost, you know in rom-coms where there's that section of the film that's like a montage of people yeah, getting, getting to know, to know each know other you, and you're yeah. like, well, that's our film. Yeah, it, it is, totally. I mean, I think that's, in, in romantic comedies, there is the people meet, like the scene you just saw, and then there's always like a, a, some clips of them strolling in the park and feeding ducks and listening to music or to whatever Coldplay it is. To Coldplay in the background. You know, yeah, to some kind of romantic <laughs> music. Or, and... and I feel like our film is the um, is the expanded version of that montage, and the reason they always do it in a montage is because it's hard to write the moments that the moments where people fall in love with each other, and the moments that they they you know you if you were going to show moments of connection and the reasons why people fall in love with each other and why they're right for each other, that's very hard to write that without sort of hitting you over the head with it. Um, and that's what I think our film does brilliantly, and why it's really fun to watch is. It's those first few moments of falling in love with somebody and, and flirting with somebody and how fun that is. And, you know, that's everyone, I think, can sort of relive it through, through this movie. And, and this particular scene as well, which I'm sure most ladies in the crowd have gone through this very experience. I know I have. Oh, yeah. It's the most uncomfortable and I didn't, frustrate. I didn't realise this was a thing that really happened to Really girls. happens. Apparently it happens really a lot. Really happens yeah. a lot. Have a look at this. There's also some really funny lines that for some reason were cut out of that clip. So that's it. That, you, you like that? It gets even better. <laughs> um, I love the knowing sniggers from the female yeah. in the audience going, oh, it's so embarrassing, especially when you're old. It's terrifying because you actually think you're going to be stuck like that for days. Yeah, I mean, I, I really was not. I thought when I read that scene, I was kind of like, oh, that's a bit contrived for us. To, uh, no, apparently it happens genuinely all the time. So I'm sorry that you're all having that experience out there. Um, I want to talk about the script and about um, if there was much improvising, but we'll do that after yeah. we see the, the final clip that we're going to oh, see. Oh, more clips. Good. Last one. <laughs> <laughs> You're really on his side from the start, though, Wallace. You're really kind of... You want him, you want things to turn out for him from the start. Yeah, I mean, I think um, Wallace and Chantry, they're both characters that you root for, and that was one of the things that read the script, was when I, re when I read the script that sort of leapt out at you with the characters because it's quite you know it's quite a traditional story in terms of the you know rom-coms we've sort of seen boy meets girl girl has a boyfriend and you know that's sort of the obstacle that you have to overcome throughout the movie and we've seen that idea before but i think what makes this film kind of fresh and interesting is the characters and the way you know what made it fun to read was the dialogue and the relationships between all the characters so hopefully I think we've we've been able to do what was in the script and even add more uh, to that in terms of those relationships and and you know Adam Driver's improvising is amazing and you know what he brings to that character is even more than was on the page and mm -hmm. it was already a, an exciting character so yeah I'm hoping that people kind of enjoy that about it you know the chemistry between not just myself and Zoe but also me and Adam and Adam and Mackenzie and Zoe and Megan who plays her sister you know She's they great, they're like yeah. real life sisters Megan has my favorite line in the entire movie actually which is right at the end when when I mean it's not ruining too much and the delivery is still funny enough that you'll laugh again when she says um, as everyone's leaving uh, everyone's leaving Zoe at the end and she's about to um, go off on a trip and and these girls uh, all her friends are there and they're all sort of saying their goodbyes and Michael Dow's our director just to told them to improvise kind of goodbyes and that all the other girls were saying I'm gonna Skype you I can't wait to Skype you and Megan just goes I'm never gonna Skype you <laughs> and, it was, and, it was, and it's in the film it's like it's the funniest line how much was improvised were you given a bit of you know what you did you was it a case of do this do it as it's done in the script and then have a bit of fun with it or how did it work with the director yeah absolutely I mean we do it sort of three or four times through just exactly as it was on the page and then start improvising after that um, but yeah we got I mean and what was good as well we had the writer there on set with us the whole time so you could sort of refer to him and and ask him about stuff if you were unsure of it which is nice because you know it's it's obviously his script um, so you know to be to be particularly the first diner scene when we're together and we start 
where we initially talk about Elvis in the movie and uh, and the way in which he died. Um, and that sort of comes up. And then we started, you know, Michael Dowse, the director, just started saying, like, OK, bring up more, like, bring up more dead famous people and just started, like, improvising about that. And there's there's more comedy to be mined out of that than you would have thought. So, yeah. <laughs> Dead people over dinner. There we go. There's yeah, a TV show in that. <laughs> Definitely. Um, we're going to get to you guys' questions in, in, in just a second. So please do that thing of get straight in with your questions. Don't leave it to the last minute because it's always the thing where you go last question and oh, yeah. everyone puts their hand up. But in terms of, of choosing what you do in terms of projects, you know, um, you, you've done a real variety of things, especially kind of post Potter. Yeah. And I, I wanted to ask you if that was kind of deliberate to to try and, and push yourself to different spectrums of an actor and, yeah. to, you know, really extreme characters and and then this choice as well. Yeah, I mean, I think I just want to keep it as varied as I possibly can. I mean, I don't think there's ever going to be one film that, you know, um, in, in people's minds finally sort of separates me from Harry. I don't think I ever will be separated from Harry and I don't want to be. You know, it was an incredibly important part of my life and something I'm st I still love and I'm very proud of. But I think this film, um, like Killia Darlings was and like The Woman in Black was, is just another step in showing people that I am interested in doing other things and that I'm just going to be sort of popping up as an actor now, doing jobs kind of, you know, away from the uh, world you might have seen me in in the past. So, yeah, I think this is part of it. And what was it about this particular project that really made you go, yeah, I want to do this? Um, well, one of the things was that I, I'd never played a, like a modern character, and mm -hmm. that was starting to weigh a little bit on my mind, just the fact that all the things... I mean, obviously, Harry is kind of modern, but it's, it's in its own world, so it doesn't really feel part of this reality. And... Um, other than that, you know, I've played people in the 1800s and the 1940s and the 1910s and just like never really played a modern human being. So I that, that was that was very attractive. Um, the dialogue and, and the part, chance to do a comedy was really something that I'd wanted to do because I am very aware that I've made a lot of very dark films since Potter and it's not necessarily that's a choice. It's just that's the kind of stuff I gravitate towards. So it was nice to find something that was light and you felt would make people happy that I also was as enthused and passionate about as I normally am. In terms of, of kind of research for this film, it doesn't feel like there was much Not to be done. Not to do, really. I mean, watch a few really good rom-coms. That's what I was going to ask you. Were there any kind of male comedy characters or actors that you admire and that you kind of, you like the tone and you like the timing that they have and that have kind of... Yeah, I mean, there's loads. I don't know the, 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 the people that I watched for this movie. Um, I mean... A little bit um, Dudley Moore in Arthur, you know, I love I love him yeah. in that movie and, and that is a romantic comedy, but, and Dudley Moore and Peter Cook uh, were some of the people I grew up watching a lot of, as well as Morecambe and Wise, obviously, and, and stuff like, you know, more modern things like Steve Coogan and Amadio Inucci shows and Chris Morris and um, the, the, in the thick of it and, and obviously The Office and stuff like that. That's where I feel like I kind of, um, that's all the comedy that I grew up watching as well as like yeah. Yes Minister and Faulty Towers. Those were kind of big staples as well. Um, so I guess I get any comedy I get is sort of from those things yeah. rather than from, um, you know, sort of the classic rom-coms. So yeah. yeah, it's, yeah. And the, the, the chemistry between you and Zoe is, is, is it just feels so natural. Thank you. It's just, um, it's uncomfortable, you know, because yeah. it's that, it's supposed to be and it's kind of, neither of you really quite know what it is. And neither of you quite know where the line is as well. Yeah. I think mean, that's one of the things about those relationships is when you're, you're friends with someone and you know you're attracted to them and have a, have a inkling that they might feel the same about you. You get to the point of, you know, when you're hanging out all the time of just going like, are we a couple like at what point do we become a couple you know it's yeah. that uh, so it's i think that's what they're dealing with in this film um it's like that thing almost like when you're sort of 15 16 and you have those kind of male friends at school and stuff and it never really becomes a question almost until you get older and you have to define relationships right. more as well isn't yeah it? i guess so yeah that's true that's not something you i suppose do yeah yeah do you think they can be friends Men, men, yeah, I mean, men and women can absolutely be, be friends. Um, there's, there's, I think there's the question of, you know, if, if, if you're really into someone and they are to you, then that's, you, you're going to find, you're going to be hard pressed to remain just friends. Um, but, um, you know, I do think it's possible. There's, yeah. there's, there's obviously loads of, uh, you know, people with platonic relationships in the world. So, of course, it's possible. It's just when the question of attraction comes into it, that changes it slightly. And that line. Yeah. Crossing that line. <laughs> Um, right, questions from our two ladies in the front who nearly shot to the ceiling. We've got lots of microphones, so that's great. So we'll get we'll go from the lady there first with the denim jacket, and then we'll get Hi. you straight after. Um, Thank you. First, may I just say I love you so much. Oh, I love you. Too. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> um, was there any embarrassing moments during filming? Um, embarrassing moments. Let me think. 
Uh, well, I mean, I've done a bit of dancing in now. Like I did a, I did a show on Broadway where I had to dance, and that was a lot of fun, and I really enjoyed it. Um, but one of the things that whenever you see like a dancing scene in a film that's in like a club, it's really weird to do because you don't have any music. So you, they, what they'll None. do at the beginning, not, not what they'll do at the beginning is they'll play like five seconds of music at the volume that it will would be in a club. So you get like a sense of how loud you should be talking, um, and and because they put the music in after, so that everyone's dancing to like different songs and different rhythms, and everyone's like making it up in their own <laughs> head. So that's it's a room full of people. Imagine like a silent disco with no headphones. Oh, um, man, just so yeah, cruel. It's, it's it's it was so it was like that. So that was the close as I came to embarrassment and you can see I mean you can see it on my face pretty much <laughs> it's always the thing as well it's like dancing's kind of making an impression on someone as well because it's you kind of if you go dance yeah. with someone you go oh, I hope I'm really good oh, man, I hope I'm, I'm a, really good yeah and I, I definitely am not in this film this is some bad <laughs> dance guy doing this movie at uh, lady next to you if you'd like to pass the mic to her that'd be great thank All you right, hi. hi um I have kind of a two-part question okay my first part is um you microphone so we can hear sorry you. yeah you're obviously like an advocate for feminism and I was thinking that in the future if you if when you direct slash produce a film are you intending on incorporating a lot more female talent in the film and you know female producers other like a direct yeah, female uh, actors yeah well I mean definitely female actors um, and yeah. yeah I mean I think there's my problem with the film industry more than there being a lack of because like the women in the film industry, that is something that is growing and that, you know, is different even now than when I started in film. Like there are more female ADs and camera technicians and, you know, working in the, the sort of because traditionally it, there are, you know, the costume department and the hair and makeup department. And all, all script supervisors, in my experience, are always female. I don't know why that is, but maybe they're just they're, I've never known a man do that job. Um, but and, and it's like it's the job that runs the set. So it's like an incredibly important thing. Um, I. I think my problem with the film industry more than like more than lack of opportunities for women is the general hierarchy and the way it works that sort of robs people of their humanity simply by virtue of having a different job to somebody. There's some actors that and, and directors and producers and people who are sort of high up in the industry that kind of do treat other people like crap all the time and it's, it's never acceptable and the, we're in an industry which tolerates it and sometimes actually engenders more of it because they reward it. Um, so that would be my main thing I, I, and obviously you know I I will, yes, I will also work with lots of amazing women in my films, I think. What, 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 what do you do? What um, do you do? I'm studying psychology with minors in film studies oh, and cool. theater arts, yeah. Do you know a department that you'd like to be getting into? Uh, I want to direct. Oh, awesome, okay. Well, Perfect. he's going to direct, so you can't have his <laughs> yeah. job. Well, you well, you yeah. want to, though, that's a We can thing. be rivals. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. okay. But that's something you want to do, isn't it? That's kind of the future you want to direct. I definitely would love to direct. Yeah, absolutely. That's and definitely something that yeah. I'd like to do as well. My second part, part. Yeah. Um, okay. are you intending on working with Dane DeHaan again in the yes, future? Yes, I am indeed. Hopefully hopefully very soon. But I, I can't say anything more than that. But I'm hoping that will happen. Amazing. One last little thing. <laughs> do you remember the Element song? I do remember the Element song. It's He's not going to sing it now because long we don't have time. We've got other questions. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, though. Okay, next question. Uh, we've got a lady there in the row there, please. Hello. Hi, um, I'm a really big fan, Hi. and um, yeah, you really inspire me with my acting and stuff. Oh, cool. So I was wondering, um, like, do you do like uh, method acting? Because I like in Kill Your Darlings, you're amazing. Oh, and Woman in Black, in Black, did you like? use method acting to um, help you or i mean no not not i don't know um there's only one person i've ever worked with who i would define as a true method actor who's ben foster who, on kill your darlings and he is amazing and also does method acting in a way that it does not um affect anybody else but himself and he's kind of self-contained and he, he you know he's he's amazing he's such a team player as well as doing that um what i do is really i think probably very much basic uh, compared to that but is um i just work out what the character wants in the script overall as a whole sort of as if the, if you could find one thing that defines who this character is in this script what is it that they're looking for so i sort of try and figure that out and then going through each scene figuring out what do they want out of every scene what is the objective of in every scene and then next to every line just going um you know what so putting a verb next to every line so like what are you trying to what effect are you trying to have on the other person are you trying to shame them or make them feel guilty or make them you know whatever it is um and i sort of just go through every line like that and i find if you if you know those things and you keep all those things with you your performance will be 
have a lot of variety naturally, but also um, will, you know, you'll never kind of lose your place. You'll never be like, oh, what's he doing in this scene? What am I feeling really in this scene? It's sort of a very good way of breaking it down. And I only realized that like Kitty Darlings was the first time I ever used that because the director told me about it and no one ever told me about it before. So I started doing it then. I recommend it. Wow, what great advice. Thank you very much for that. That's amazing. Nice. Um, we got Lady there. Yep, you, yep. Oh, yeah. She's got a book. Pass the mic along. There we go. Thank you. And is there someone over here as Hi. well that wanted to question? Hi. Um, Get a microphone. Your co star, um, Jemima Ripper, was oh, recently yeah. with um, Angela Lansbury on stage. First of all, I was wondering why it was like to work with Jemima. And secondly, is there any screen icon or stage icon that you would love to work with? Um. Ooh. Yeah, Jemima's lovely. She's fantastic. Um, we, were, we were so lucky that she was in New York uh, at the time when we were doing the film and she was available to come and do it with us. So, uh, yeah, I can't say enough nice things about her. And when I saw her at the premiere the other day, I was like, oh, thank God you're here. That is so nice. Just nice to see her. Um, and... Um, uh, yeah, in terms of like screen legends, I've, that's I've the worked thing, with I a have few worked already. with a lot. Yeah. That's Quite like, a few. I've done yeah. more than most people my age would have uh, would have yeah. worked with. But um, is directors maybe something then? In directors. Terms of, I mean, yeah. Who? I mean, I'd love to like I'd love to work with the Coen Brothers. Are kind of my dream people to work with. Luke Besson by any chance? Luke Besson would be awesome. That would be like because he's just a crazy person. I don't know if he is in real life. I kind of assume he must be <laughs> to make the films he makes. But um, but yeah, I, that was I would love to work with him. And then yeah, I mean. Um, you know what, I, I got really excited about a while ago uh, for a film that has not happened yet but hopefully will at some point uh, we were going through casting suggestions for one of the older parts in it and somebody suggested um, I'm not sure if he'd still be up for it but somebody suggested Dick Van Dyke which I would be kind of brilliant like I, I would love to do that um, so uh, yeah that's somebody that comes to mind okay great then we've got time for two last questions lady right there please there we go Hello. 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 Um, I'm wondering um, if you get a chance, do you want to play any villain? Um, villain? Yeah, absolutely. I um, I definitely would. I mean, in Horns, the movie I've got coming out in October, that's kind of a that's a real sort of anti-hero type part, which is you know that's sort of more towards that. My character does some very questionable things in it, but um, but yeah, I would definitely like to, to play a proper villain at some point. I think that'd be a lot of fun. Okay. And last Thank question. You. Oh my goodness. Hi. What character did you connect with most on set? Um, I mean, it's, it's different. Uh, I there's there's moments of connection with all of them, I suppose. I mean, I've connected with Wallace a lot just because he's, as I said earlier, kind of modern and the closest to somebody really like me that I've ever played. Um, but you know, the character in Horns, I I connect to his taste in music a lot, and that's sort of a big way in for me with that character. Um, so you know, I think I I kind of connect with all of them. I think if I was to define it, like I would be sort of a mixture of my character in this movie, Wallace, um, Harry, and and Ig from from Horns. I'm just aware. That I just want to say a thank you and sorry to the person that is signing everything I say because I talk so fast. <laughs> <laughs> That's so nice of you. Um, it, you're, it, it, what I love when you when you talk about what you do is just how excited you are about about the future as well. And, and you know, we've got this now, we've got horns as well, and then we've got um, Frankenstein, Frankenstein as well. Frankenstein next year, which is myself and James McAvoy. Um, we're yeah, that'll be that's fun. <laughs> <laughs> that's a nice. I'm not quite sure what you describe that sound as, but it was quite nice, wasn't it? Ooh, it was good. It was like a yeah, wave no, of like lady. It was a building <laughs> tingle. <laughs> um, um, it but was, I love how excited you are about the well, future and about these roles and about well that's the thing i mean like I'm, i have i do really think like i have the best job in the world and you know I, I i think i'm probably said to you before like film is the culmination of the most divert like there are so many different disciplines all working together on a film set to come and make the one thing happen and it's just it's a thing of total beauty to me and it always has been since i was a kid and um yeah, so I am passionate about it because I want to do it for the rest of my life. So, Do yeah. some more comedy as well because you're oh, great at it. Thank you very much. I'll Brilliant. try. Brilliant. Thank you so much for thank coming, so everyone. Much, I'm sorry everybody. we couldn't get through everyone's really questions. Thank you. What if is in cinemas from Wednesday? Thank you so much for coming out this afternoon. Daniel Radcliffe comedy feels incredibly natural Thank to you, you very much. Was it a natural 
feeling and experience? Uh, yeah, definitely. It was lovely to. This was kind of a, a pleasure to make this film. You know, it was. Um, it was. You know, I'd never done comedy really on screen before. I'd sort of done a bit in extras and I'd done a bit on stage. Um, but no, to be able to do a whole film where your your job every day was just to turn up and and make the person in the scene with you laugh, rather than to you know have some sort of emotional breakdown or you know save a dying child from a train. Or in cinemas this Wednesday, please give a huge round of applause to Star the film, Mr. Daniel Radcliffe! Uh, hello, thank you very much. Cheers. Hi, uh, that was hello. almost a stunt entry onto the stage. That was amazing. Well, that was, I don't know, I can't Let's. see it. I, it. It was sort of invitingly low down to jump Good. onto. Yeah. Liked it. Thank you. And I love this film. Um, Good. I've, Good. I'm in a privileged position where I've seen it and a lot of these people here haven't. But um, congratulations. Can I first say that... Whatever it is that I've done in sort of other films, it was nice to just be able to, I don't know, turn up and be sort of myself every day. I mean, it is the most like myself of any mm. character I've ever played, I think. I, I wanted to ask you that and whether that was, a, whether that was a, an easy experience or, or whether that was actually quite difficult because, you know, there was, there was less... I, I get less barrier, I guess, there. Or, yeah. or... I mean, I think if I was doing it in the context of a film that was a lot darker, then it would be kind of harder to... Um, use more of myself in that kind of you know in a more painful context but because this film we're glad yeah and I'm definitely glad I got over that in time to make this film because I think I'm not particularly like the character in this movie so I think when you put sort of my personality into a character that I'm not particularly like it sort of it makes something interesting happen do you like it better or is it a different experience to um it's just a different experience that's the thing that there are lots of ways that acting can be fun for me like it's really fun playing the kind of part I play in Horns which is totally different from uh, anything I've ever it's, it's so light and sweet and, and, and very you know, sort of charming um, it, it wasn't like I, I wasn't kind of having a very intense day and then struggling to separate myself from the character when I got home or anything it was just you know it's uh, in this occasion it was very nice to be able to let some of myself through and I think in the past when I started out acting I kind of would have thought that it was um I don't know that it didn't really count as acting if I'm just playing myself or mm. that somehow that was a lesser version of doing it. But as you, as you say, you know, it, to just be yourself in front of the camera is, is quite something sometimes. And I